where's your head at? Let me start by saying that you will notice that just about all people's experience with the Torah are very common. Mine was no different. I live in Sydney, Australia and am 20 years of age. I have tried a lot of different drugs and never had one that I didn't enjoy. This was soon to change. My first experience with this nasty drug was only two weeks ago from the time of me writing this report, and it goes a little like this. I live with my father in the inner city suburbs. I was at home on a Saturday with no money and no plans for the night. My father comes home from walking the dog with this trumpet shaped white flower saying that he'd think it could be the Torah. I go online to find some pictures of this elusive drug and in no time have confirmation that it is very well indeed the Torah. Now for my part, I am very excited about this little discovery and quickly ask where my father had found this stuff, but naturally he does not want to tell me because of obvious reasons and just said that I probably walk past it every day. Now I catch a train to work so I quickly went for a voyage up to the station in search of a free high and was not disappointed that halfway there in someone's front yard were three shrubs of this stuff with the white flowers hanging over the fence just waiting to be plucked from their stationary position, I take only one off the shrub. Upon arriving home, I tell my father that I found this little treat, and his response was simply, don't take that stuff with me around, but over excited and very much wanting to give it a shot, I measure a coffee mug of water into a pot and throw in the flower I picked and the one my father found right away and begin to boil it in the water. I only boiled it for... 10-15 minutes using a potato masher to press down on the flour to extract all the goodness and when the water was a nasty yellow pissy color I decided that it should be suffice being that my experience with mushrooms worked quite well with the same method and strained all the juice out of the flowers and poured it into the coffee mug. Two tea bags, three large teaspoons of sugar and a little milk should help erase the taste. I knew it was going to be bad from the smell, but it still tasted like shit and I dry wrenched several times whilst downing this potent cup of tea. I sit down on the couch with my father at the computer and watch a little telly waiting for the onset of this drug, thinking it would take an hour or so, but within a half hour I feel noticeably different and decide that now it was a good time to tell my father that I did take the drug and not to worry too much if I started acting strange or talking rubbish. The come on was so much stronger than I thought it would be and the first thing I feel is my eyelids weighing too much for me to be able to hold them open and this uncontrollable urge to lay down and close my eyes for a bit. I normally get tired and yawny when I take harder drugs so this is very normal to me. So I head for my room to lay down for a while till this stuff kicked in. The time I drank this stuff would have been around 7pm and I came back downstairs for my little rest that felt like 20 minutes at about 11pm. If you had read other personal experiences on this stuff, you will see that everyone needed to use the bathroom quite often and had the worst case of con mouth in their lives. Mine was no different. So after the most enjoyable visit to the bathroom I ever had, I ventured back downstairs to replenish my thirst. My father was still awake and could tell by the way I had to hold on to things to move around that I was quite high and I had to confirm to him that I was going smoothly. I drank about 3 cups of water simultaneously and went out front for a cigarette. I felt numb and heavy headed and at the same time floating in the clouds and light headed unlike any other high I had experienced and after finishing the cigarette I came back inside to have another drink of water. I had a bit of chit chat with my father and he was constantly saying what are you talking about and my only reply was I don't know. Now the first scary thing to happen was when I needed a drink and came into the kitchen for this very reason. Picked up an open bottle of canola vegetable oil and had a chug on it, two gulps before realizing it was cooking oil and running out the front with the last gulp still in my mouth and throwing up over the balcony all in the presence of my father who was obviously dumbfounded. After I had thrown up all the oil, I needed a drink to get the taste out of my mouth and came back to the kitchen and picked up the same bottle of cooking oil and proceeded to lift it to my mouth for another swig, but I realized by the look on my father's face as I was doing, I had made another blunder and luckily pulled out before making the same mistake twice in a matter of 5 minutes. It was now about midnight and my father decided to leave me alone and go to bed. I was grateful for that. 
The next few hours are blurry and my memory is very poor, but I remember watching an adult movie on the DVD-ROM drive of my computer, and what I will tell you next is probably the reason for me trying this stuff again. I couldn't take my eyes off the porn and was very much enjoying it. I must have watched the same movie 5 or 6 times, and the harder I watched it, the more it seemed that it was a personal show at a strip club or something. With the girls in the movie constantly looking at the camera, smiling and waving for you to join in, I found myself looking behind me to see if there was anyone else in this strip club, and was naturally happy to find out that she was in fact doing this awesome show all for me. At times it was like we were communicating through the computer, and she would wave for me to join in, and I had to explain that I couldn't get inside the screen for some reason. None of this was at all strange to me, and I was having a really good time as you would imagine. I think it was around 6 or 7 am that I decided to venture upstairs to have a nap, and being that I was tired, I thought sleep would be easy, but boy was I wrong. Now this was the most unbelievable sleep I ever had, because the whole time I was unsure as to whether or not I was actually asleep. I would remember every detail of every dream and constantly waking up whilst finishing big sentences and wondering if my father could hear me talking in my sleep. One dream I had was a cartoon and I can remember making up every sentence of every character and feeling great about the fact that I had so much control of my dreams. This is way too hard to try and describe what I went through that night in my sleep, so I will leave it at that. I woke up at around 2pm Sunday and got out of bed feeling full of energy and still really scattery in the head. I had to tell my mates about this magical drug that grows in the old Greek lady's front yard. I rang up my mate Dave and told him that there is something I want to show him and he picked up that I was coming over to share some drugs with him but he didn't know what. I went back up the street and this time picked 7 flowers off the plant and went home and wrapped them in cling wrap then proceeded to Dave's house at about 5pm. What the fuck is that stuff was the first thing Dave said after seeing a ball of green and white wrapped in cling wrap. The Torah bro, you gotta have a test ride of this stuff man. And Dave was happy to oblige. So in the cooking pot with the 7 little sins and 2 coffee cups of water, I was excited as Dave to do this stuff again, and so the same story as the previous night, boiled for 15 minutes, strained, and drank with tea. Now my first experience with this stuff had a heavy come on with only 2 of the flowers, and I had just given my mate Dave 3.5 flowers worth for his first time, so naturally, within half an hour, he was heavy as hell and quickly on his way to that exact place. My come on wasn't as bad because I had done it within 24 hours and I was still high from the previous night, but Dave was struggling. I told him, just lay down, close your eyes, and write it out. Dave has also had plenty of experience with drugs of all nature, and he did exactly that. We took the tea around 4pm and so the plan was to stay indoors and listen to music and basically chill and we did exactly that. Now my second time was even more patchy than my first time and all conception of time was straight out the window. For the first few hours all I remember was stumbling around Dave's apartment running into walls and whatever I could find I would fall on over or into. For some reason we both kept on dropping plates and cups and I think by the end of the night we broke about 6 cups and 7 plates. Why we needed to pick up plates was beyond both our grasp. All of this was unfolding at around 3am Monday morning and we both had to work in a matter of hours. But this was not going to happen and we knew it. I kept on running into walls and cupboards and just remember walking straight into them knowing it was going to happen but unable to stop myself from doing so. At one point, I headbutted a cupboard so hard it nearly broke my nose, and I still have a kink in it, but there was no stopping me from doing it again. At some point in the early hours of the morning, I remember hearing a knock on the door, and it was another mate of Jake. Thing is, he had a group of people with him that I didn't know, and they all came inside and sat down in the living room and didn't say anything. Jake put his head between his legs and sat there in silence, and I thought that he was really drunk or something, so I left him be and continued to walk around the apartment in haze. After a while, I approached Jake and tried to make conversation with him, and when he finally looked up, I came to realize that it wasn't Jake at all, and I had never seen this guy before. 
he just stared at me and didn't say anything, and it kinda freaked me out a bit, but didn't really faze me at all. I was smoking imaginary cigarettes all night, and there was maybe six people in the apartment I didn't know, and Dave was not to be seen, but he was there the whole time as well. Every time I looked away, the strange people would disappear, and I would walk into another room, and there they were again. This was completely normal to me. The silent people began to take on the form of mental patients, I believe because my subconscious thought I was going insane. And I was constantly making conversation with them, and they would talk back, but no sound would come out, so I was trying to lip read. As the night wore on, the strange silent people would take on more horror-based figures, and it was turning into a complete nightmare, but I wasn't scared at all. So much more happened, and I saw some really freaky stuff, but I can go on and on about it, but it's pointless. When the heat finally subsided a bit, me and Dave started to communicate again. We were both dying for a smoke of marijuana, so we decided to call up a drug dealer at 4am. Now Dave works in market research, and when he rang up the dealer, he started to introduce himself like he was talking to a client. The dealer was not impressed as you would imagine. So finally, I called a taxi to go home, and I got home just before sunrise, went straight to my room, and went to bed. And sure enough, I had company in the form of mental patients laying on the floor beside my bed. By this time, I had my head together enough to know that I was hallucinating, but the mental patients were still with me. So I started to play around with this buzz a little by trying my hardest to produce new figures, in the form of sexy woman, naturally. And it actually worked, but I couldn't keep them there, and the mental patients were with me all night. At one point, I asked them if they were hanging around me because they fancied me, and sure enough, they nodded. There were only two of them when I got back to my place. They were both female, and one of them was the exact same one I was talking to at Dave's place. One of them was just a pillow on the floor, so the head was big and square, and she constantly had a big smile on her face with an enormous mouth. The other one was the one from Dave's place, a clock that was smoking crack at the start of the night, and the rim of the clock was like braces for her face. Yeah, I know, some wild shit. So I lay in bed for hours making conversation with my new friends, thinking to myself the whole time, am I going insane? But the fact that they were not talking back kept me from believing so. I dreamt the same as the night before with lovely colorful dreams and somehow managed to call work and tell them I won't be making it in. I have no memory of this so naturally when I called them the second time my boss was already informed and asking why I had to tell him again. Now I will tell you about the experience of the side effects which weren't that bad at all. I couldn't read for a good 4 days and this is the reason I had 2 days off work. I kept on getting little flashes of the trip and if I rub my hands together I could tell it felt like I did when I was high. My pupils were dilated for two days after the trip and people would notice and comment on this which is not a good feeling at all so I had to wear dark glasses everywhere.